Great, thanks Megan, much appreciated. Welcome everyone to our February webinar, uh, Limbs Instrument Interfacing, at times they are a change in. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, I'm Adam Chance. I'm a senior informatics consultant with CECLs. Uh, I specialize in uh, business analysis, uh, development and validation of laboratory execution systems. Uh, I've got five years experience in pharmaceutical uh, informatic consulting and uh, over 15 years of experience in the uh, biopharma and pharma industry. Uh, started my career out in the QC micro and chemistry labs and uh, have uh, moved up to Biovia, using Biovia limbs and LES as not only an end user, but also as a developer and administrator. Uh, so I'll pass over to Susie and let her introduce herself. Susie? Thanks, Adam. Hi, everyone. My name is Susie Weisker, and I'm a senior informatics consultant with CSOLS. Uh, like Adam, I specialize in business analysis and have also done validation of LIMS and CDS systems. Uh, so I've been in consulting for six years, primarily in pharmaceuticals, but also a bit in medical devices. And prior to that, I worked in the pharma industry as both an R&D and QC uh, chemistry lab analyst. And I have exp extensive experience with Empower CDS and LabWare Limbs, both as an end user and an administrator. Back to you, Adam. Great. Thanks, Susie. So we're here today to talk about uh, the evolution of interfacing your instrumentation with your, in this particular case, LIMS system, uh, but it can be applied to really any, any, any external system. Uh, so traditionally, uh, instrument interfacing really was pretty straightforward. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot to it, and it was really, uh, really primarily consisted of parsing data that had been sent over to the instrument via an output file and uh, just a, a limited exchange of, of data. Uh, these days, uh, we've got additional uh, uh, systems that allow us to do things a, a little bit more robustly uh, with the advent of these instrument software systems. And, and uh, when I'm talking about lab, uh, LabWare software systems, I'm talking about things like LabEx, uh, uh, CDS, uh, the chromatography data systems, uh, plate readers, any system uh, that's, a, that's, that's associated with an instrument uh, that has its own software controlling package. Uh, with the advent of these systems, uh, we're really able to start implementing integrations for multiple instrument types like pH meters, titrators, balances, um, and, uh, and even the CDSs in the, uh, for HPLC and, and GC applications. And we're able to now do a lot more in our workflow. And because of this now, our, our interfacing paradigm really has changed. So what this has come out to be for us is that now interfacing instruments is really starting to change into integrating systems. Now, here I'd, I'd like to throw out just a couple of definitions real quick, and these are just high level definitions to get the point across. Uh, but when we interface something, we're usually looking at the flow of data between two applications in a very limited capacity. Uh, so traditionally what we've done is we've been able to take a balance, for instance, and transmit a single point of data, the grams reading uh, that's that's on the display. Uh, contrast that with our new systems that are out there. Uh, we integrate these systems. And when we integrate, we're actually taking and merging two complex systems together that are able to do things like uh, data collection, processing, uh, workflows, uh, transforming data, uh, and even their reporting capabilities. And we unify those under a single architecture for that end user experience. So you'll hear us talking about interfaces today, and you'll also hear us about integrations today. Uh, interfaces, we're talking more of the past integrations we talk more of today. So as you can see here in this graphic, uh, I've got basically the three, uh, three basic progressions of these interfaces into integrations happening. Uh, as you can see, the top graphic here was really our, our old school way of doing things. We take a reading off of a balance or an instrument, whatever it happens to be. We manually transcribe that data onto a notebook or a worksheet. And then we, tr again, manually transcribe that into our uh, LIM system. Uh, with advances in technologies, we've been able to now 
transmit that data via a protocol converter or a network card. And what these things do is basically allow us to electronically transmit data. Uh, and instead of having this manual transcription step, we're now able to electronically transfer that to our limb system. Now fast forward to today, and we have the introduction of these uh, instrument controlling software systems. As I mentioned, LabX, uh, Tiamo, uh, plate readers have their own uh, controlling software as, as well as uh, CDS systems, uh, chromatography data systems. Uh, and those software systems now allow us to perform many, many more um, uh, actions within the workflows, business workflows and such. And that's what we're really going to talk about today. So in the next hour, we're going to talk about how we're how to understand why upfront planning is critical and what happens if we move ahead without planning. We're going to be able to recognize how instrument integration can improve your limbs return on investment or that ROI. We're going to learn uh, why the limb system integration should really be part of your phase one deployment. Why do we want to get it in now versus waiting a year or two down the road? Uh, and that has a lot to do with our return on investment. Uh, we're going to discover the questions that really need to be answered for our LIMS instrument software integration or our LIMS CDS integration. And we'll also be able to understand the considerations for integrating systems such as our LabX, Tiamo, and Power, uh, or other controlling systems with our Labware LIMS. So really, in the beginning, we have this classic instrument interface. And as I had mentioned earlier, this classic interface uh, was really, really limited to basic data transfers. Uh, we really weren't able to do much more than that. Uh, there were a couple of ways that we can uh, and still do actually interface uh, in these limited capacities. The first is through an RS-232 port. Uh, this is a, a standard port that's been around for years uh, and a lot of older instruments uh, and some newer instruments still have this type of port. Um, we utilize a protocol converter to, to uh, translate the, the language that's being uh, uh, transmitted from the RS-232 port, to RS-232, there we go, I got it, port out to the ethernet. The other way that we were able to connect instruments is through directly through the, uh, uh, a network card to the ethernet. Uh, there's a little less configuration that needs to be done in this respect, um, and the network card is usually installed directly into the instrument, whereas the protocol converter is, is sits outside the instrument. Uh, with this type of instru uh, instrument interface, we typically lack the ability to perform complex workflows and actions uh, that the business usually asks for. Uh, and we also have a very limited means as, as to send or maintain metadata. Uh, it's usually restricted to a single point of data that we're sending over, uh, so that metadata is, is pretty much stripped out. Uh, this type of interface also uses a uh, basic file-based transfers and parsing. So we may be utilizing uh, different file types like XML, rich text formats, Excel files, all to be able to transfer information from one system to another. We parse that information out and provide it to our, our receiving system. Uh, the workflows are very simple. There wasn't much to them. We couldn't do very, any, anything very complex. Uh, it would typically look like something like an instrument uh, is continually listening for a command. We send a command asking for a single bit of data and it returns that data uh, for parsing out. There we go. Here is a uh, uh, just a very simplistic flow chart of what that interface would look like in the interaction between the instrument and uh, the system, in this case, in LIMS. So in LIMS, we would ask for the data to be uh, collected. In turn, it would send out a command to the instrument that instrument would open the ports, process the command, and send back either the data point or a file for us to parse out. Uh, so just pretty linear, not too much to it. So wh why interface then? If it's going to be so limited, why why worry about it? Well, first and foremost, data transcription. Uh, you get uh, you get an instant transfer of that data, and you don't have to worry about transcribing errors uh, from a person trying to write that value down. Uh, whenever and whenever we do instant transfers uh, or anything instantly, really automated, uh, we're reducing testing times. Uh, that's just that's 
just a, a great benefit of, of these automated processes. Whenever we reduce our testing time, uh, we're also reducing our review times. So we're not, we don't have to, to take nearly as much time to review. Uh, and we're also providing some simplistic audit trail capabilities, not necessarily within the instrument, but within the receiving system. So LIMS would have an audit trail of when you've requested the command. It may have uh, also have an audit trail entry for when the data has come back. Uh, so the audit trails can tell you what and when came, uh, it came over. Now, I want to pause for just a second and say that this classic way of instrument interfacing is still very much in use today. Uh, we, we still use it uh, hand over fist in, in many applications. Um, and that's not saying that it's the wrong way to do it or an old outdated way of doing it. Uh, you may simply have a, a, a work process or business process that would require just a single bit of data to come over, and that's particularly fine. Um, but what we'll focus today is how we can improve that process and actually build in our business flows and our business processes into the instrument or the, the data gathering process. So with the classic, uh, the classic way of, of interfacing, uh, we still need to pre-plan. Anytime we're working uh, with, a, uh, with interfacing uh, with our systems, we always want to pre-plan instead of just jump, jumping in without any forethought. Um, now that said, the classic way of, of interfacing is really simplistic, as I've mentioned before, and therefore there wasn't a whole lot of pre-planning that was needed, still some. Uh, we needed to understand how we're going to connect to our uh, instrument. Are we going to do that via a protocol converter or a network card? Uh, uh, typically these days, balances uh, are able to accept network cards. Um, other instruments like pH meters may still need to run uh, through a protocol converter uh, to translate that information and those protocols. So that RS-232, uh, the protocol converter is required. And another consideration is that there are custom pinning and cabling requirements associated with different makes and models of instruments. Um, I won't get into that uh, too terribly uh, deep here, but just to let you know that there, different manufacturers have different configurations. So that's something you need to, to, uh, to keep in mind, especially if you have to make them your own and the, the manufacturer doesn't supply those. Uh, our network cards, if we choose to uh, take that approach, uh, the installation is pretty simple, uh, but not all instruments accept them. You can't install a network card in just everything, as I mentioned before. We also need to identify the data points that we're going to transfer. Now, that could be a single point or multiple points, depending on, on uh, the test in hand. Uh, and we also need to determine when and how to transfer that information. Uh, do we wait for a stable reading to come through? Do we want to send the current units that are also associated with that reading? Do we send uh, a single sample result or we, do we wait till the end and send them all over together uh, in, with the use of a, a, an auto sampler? So these are some of the considerations to take into, into plan when pre-planning for your classic or simple type of instrument interface. And as I've talked about, there is a new way, right? Uh, we have these uh, instrument controlling software systems that really replace your network card and protocol converter accessories. Uh, so now we have a, a slightly different way to communicate with LIMS. Um, and our outside systems. Uh, these these uh, controlling software systems like the LabX, Tiamo, Plate Reader, CDS, as I mentioned before, uh, they really add a, a, just a heap more functions and capabilities um, to, to the overall process. Uh, it moves the classic interfaced instrument to now an integrated system, instrument system. Uh, now that you have all these new uh, uh, um, abilities in with you. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the, the, that basic definition of integration means that you're now operating with two systems that work as one, uh, especially from the end user perspective. So the classic, as I mentioned before, classic interface is still very much commonly used today. Um, but as we move over to those integrated systems, uh, we're just being presented with many more benefits that we could take advantage of uh, if your business process needs them.